Kurt, would you like to come down and do a straw band, a cabana with us and we'll pay a royalty per bottle? Um, and we'll, we'll see. Um, I, I don't really know at this point whether or not that's going to scale beautifully. And yeah. it's, it, there is, there is issues with, you know, when you're making, when you have to make at 3,700 liters at a time, um, you've got to be able to deal with all of the aspects of it. And, um, <sighs> strawberry banana commercial mead. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh my God! If you do that, I like want the first bottle. Okay, just saying. Just let me know. I'll pay it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I do it, I'll 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 be hiring Kurt to come and teach me what to do because yeah, <laughs> he knows hmm. what to do, and then we'll work out the details of how to make it on a scale that yeah um, lets us actually you know. I adore it. strawberries and bananas together. <laughs> it's it's tremendous. It's it's uh. Have you thought about doing pawpaws? I have. Um, pawpaws are are unique in that, and and we've 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 um actually you know messed around with the fruit itself. Uh, they're not going to be easy to process. They they um aren't they a seedy sort of fruit like pomegranates? They are. They are. Yep. Um, they're not exactly like pomegranates. They they have they're they're like they're sort of uh, a cross between a pomegranate and a and a watermelon in that the seeds, the seeds lay, um, parallel to the, the, you know, the center line of the fruit. They're big, they're, they're hard. Um, so they will be, they would be a challenge to deal with. And the fruit itself is, is, uh, sort of custardy, like a custardy banana like texture. And so they, they would be, um, very, very challenging to deal with on a, on a commercial level, they're also they're also really acidic too. They have they have a a tremendous level of uh, finishing bite that would have to be worked with and and balanced to uh, to work really well. Now I know John Talkington was doing one for one of his home meads. He had talked about it on the mead group, and. Uh, I was I, I've always heard about them. I've never had the opportunity to try a pawpaw, uh, even though I grew up in Michigan. They don't grow them in the northern part of the state. So, um, right. and uh, I always heard about them, and the way they were described, it sounded like they'd be like the perfect fruit, at least for me. Um, you know, as far as the flavor profile that that I've heard described. Yeah, they, and well, I don't know of anybody that processes them either. They would have to be. I'm, I'm from what I understand, the people that have done them on a on a home mead making scale um, have peeled them and and uh, sliced them and used them that way um, but that's that's uh getting enough of those peeled and sliced to oh, do yeah. a 3700 liter batch would, <laughs> would be a challenge yeah mangoes that's, are bad enough every time i buy the 10 mangoes for 10 bucks deal at the store it's like a messy dirty grungy job but you know yep. Then the yep. next package of mangoes goes in the freezer to await till I have enough mangoes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Agreed. So I know you're a big fan of of currants. I mean, you got currants in what over half your meads, right? Uh, well, no, not quite, but a lot of them. Yeah. A lot of them, yeah. So, um, I'd be curious because they're very acidic. So. Um, just cause I'm not a big fan of straight currant meads to me are just, they're just too puckery, you know? I mean, and now that's not to say that all of them are, I've had some really good ones that surprised me. Uh, but generally speaking, most of the currant meads I've, I've had, not yours, I've had yours and, and yours are very well balanced, but, um, a lot of the ones that I've had for home and commercial were just so tart, so terribly, terribly tart. And, um, what I'm wondering is, what are your favorite pairings with currants to get that to get that place of balance? Now I'm not trying to draw you out on your recipes, I know, but um, I'm just wondering, both in the scope that you're working and then outside of that, what fruits would you say would be good with currants? Well, HOD is currants, cherries, red raspberries, mm-hmm. um, and I both think the Agnes's are currants as well, right? Right, red Agnes is just red currants, and black Agnes is black currants. Okay. Um, and uh, red Agnes is there is no red Agnes. We just made her up. 
<laughs> because we like Black Agnes. I mean, Ag- Black Agnes is based on Agnes Randolph. Yeah. Um, and uh, she was she was this pretty cool Scottish woman. Um, not even pretty cool. Just outrageously cool. Yeah, she was cool. Yeah. She was one of those uh, uh, quiet women rarely make history kind of women, you know, because she wasn't right. One of those. Yeah. No, she was she was not not unwilling to uh, to uh, flip off an Englishman, as it were. Um, <laughs> good for her. Yeah, good for her. Um, so, anyways, uh, yeah, the, and those are those are straight, and we're we're just balancing those with honey. There's there's no there's no magic to that. I say, I mean, it is it is. There's there's some some people would say there's some tasty magic in it, but. Uh, there's there's no mystery to the fact that we're just balancing the the tartness of those currants with the sweetness from the honey, um, and I would think I would think that uh, you could do some pretty magnificent stuff with with some um, some softer fruits. Um, I I I have uh, on my own done a peach black currant mead. Ooh, that was delightful. Uh, and that was that was good, um, mm-hmm. and and I I mean the, the kinds of you know like black currants and bananas things that are things that are uh, that have a high degree of sweetness but not a high degree of of uh, acidity. Um, the, mangoes, the mangoes, mangoes are pretty well. No, you're right, you're right. Mang- I, I was looking at the numbers earlier today. The, the numbers on mangoes aren't aren't really all that high. No, um, I mean they do have a little bit, but they're mostly just lots and lots of sweet. Yep. Yep. So, so pairing it with the. Have you tried mixing red and black? Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> call that. Well, we just we just mix the meads together, and we call that the sisters' cuvee. Um, How and, fun! Yeah, and we just we just mix the two meads. Nice. One to one, and it's <laughs> delicious. It's really <laughs> delicious. Do you use the same proportion of uh, black currants in black Agnes as you do with red currants and red Agnes? Yes, we do, um, but we use a little, just a touch less honey in red Agnes. Okay. But the but the uh, the number of uh, the pounds of of uh, red currants per batch and the number of pounds of black currants per batch is is the same. Um, the one thing I will say is that uh, there's there's a bigger throatier component to black currants, and it, it's 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 really apparent when you see and handle the fruit. Red mm-hmm. currants red currants are softer; they're more berry like, and Black currants are crunchy little things, man. Red currants are sort of like almost translucent and and kind of blueberry esque softness. Little Whereas translucent balls of juice. They are. They are. They're magnificent. And and uh, I probably used that word magnificent too many times in this podcast. <laughs> uh, no, uh, it's okay. Yeah. Superlatives are a good thing. Black currants are little woody beasts. Uh, yeah, they're a lot drier for sure. They're drier, harder to pick, uh, harder to deal with, and and hmm. really uh, uh, have a great deal more uh, acidity and and less sweetness to them. Which I, I say that it, it's it's not a great deal, but it, once you get to the levels of acidity that are present in red currants, if you turn that dial up even a little bit more, it just it just seems. Uh, like you've you've gone into a new realm of outrageousness, and that's where black currants are. So, <laughs> yeah, the times I've used black currants, I've used less of them than I use red currants. But I also have a habit of using too much red currant and having to do something about the pH drop. Yeah, no, we we haven't we haven't had an issue with that. I mean, it's uh, and that that's just with wine. That's not even using honey. Yeah, no, that well, yeah. I think the honey the, and and are you using are you using uh like a a, a Fermaid K or other high uh micronutrient uh 
Yeah, typically I use a combination of DAP and uh, a yeast energizer that I'm presuming is something similar to a Fermate K. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, I find um, I find that meads tend to be a little more acidic than wines, and uh, I haven't actually tried a, a mead yet with black currants or red currants just because I find them so acidic on their own. Yeah. Well, we uh, we haven't had issues. Our, our our red currant fermentations have been rocking. Um, <laughs> almost volcanic. <laughs> <laughs> volcanic is not a bad thing. So, do you guys have any uh, upcoming events aside from uh, Me Day in August? I, I looked on the website, and didn't see anything upcoming, but I was wondering. Uh, well, I think we just sold out. We're we're doing a fundraiser to try and get the bottling line put together. Mm-hmm. Um, we are we are going to release a few uh, small format bottles of HOD that we had uh, nice. set us for for kind of an occasion like this. To be honest with you, we knew we knew we were going to hit a point where we wanted to to uh, let those loose on the world, and we're going to help do the stroke on the on the bottling line with those. This is going to be um, a whole month before I get up there. Dang, we'll be gone by the time I get there. <laughs> we, we have we have some fun stuff coming. Um, we're waiting on we're waiting on some label approvals. Like I said, ah. to, to put some things on tap. We, I, I think I think if you're if you're if you have people who can make a pilgrimage, um, I'd, I'd keep your eye on on the the Facebook page, and um, we we are going to have some really fun stuff. We did some we did some pilot batching this past year. And and had a few things come out really really well. We we, we were we were uh, really happy with them. Um, and so, uh, like we we for example, uh, we did a whole set of of different blackberries, um, and we and we uh, fermented out specific varietal blackberries to figure out which ones um, made the most sense and which ones created profiles that we really liked. Um, if, if you have people that are, I mean, I think for the mead making crowd, um, this is going to be the kind of informative thing that, you know, comes along every so often. Uh, I know, I know there have been a few people who have done that whole mead experiment thing with the different yeasts. Now mm-hmm. we, we, we did ours back in whatever, 94, but, uh, um, we did one now with, with, uh, five different varieties of blackberries. So that, that's nice. going to be a cool flight for people when it when those all get on tap and they'll, they'll those will probably go on tap within the next couple of months um there are a couple of really fun like i said there's going to be that smile of fortune mead that's going to be available on tap um at, at the tasting room here in in uh another few weeks nice. and uh, so yeah yeah i mean there there's some there's some fun stuff there and um well and, and I, s- I see you've got something coming up here a all right, time for another commercial. <laughs> uh, I just hit your Facebook page. For those of you that don't know, you can find Tramsmead at facebook.com slash Um But what, July 10th, you have a Heart of Darkness themed fundraising dinner? It sold out. <laughs> Did it really? Wow. That's great. It's sold out. It sold okay. out while, so for sold those out of while we were in the podcast. Vicky. Oh, my God, that's great. <laughs> And you just posted this five hours ago. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I'm not surprised. If I was going to be home, then I'd have been like first in line to get a ticket. So for those of you that you know want to drool and uh, you know wish that you gotten your tickets faster, like me, uh, they're doing a raid the seller event. To ra- is this part of the fundraiser for getting the bottling line? It is. Okay. And they're going to be doing uh, Red Agnes, Madeline, Heather Traditional, Black Agnes, Angus, and the Heart of Darkness. And uh, is this what multiple different days? Uh, well, the, the July tenth is the is the event, and then the, the next day that we will be open is the following Wednesday. Uh huh. And if people are looking for um, kind of unusual and interesting bottles, uh, there will be there will be a few of them left over, I'm sure, on the on hmm. the following. Let me hang on. Let me get to the calendar here. Yeah, that would be. That will be. The thirteenth, yeah, thirteenth. Um, so, if you wanted to try and snag something that's a little bit elusive, uh, that'd, that'd be a good day to show up at the at, 
the tasting room. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I know. I'm going to. My husband told me that I have to rent a car.